Hi everyone, welcome to Itsy Bitsy's live read of Girls Point by Natalie Barnes. Detroit, Michigan, November 25th, 1926. Shadows swore my vision as I try desperately to latch on to the light, but the only light bestowing is the thought of her. My ears throb as if they were a hammer making use with nails that be piercing through my skull. Though the holes in my beep, beak seeps in the worn scent of gunpowder, the burns ripen, a sear growing within me, keen to know damn well just where I be, by the scent of faded flesh and rotten walls. However now, the air around grows heavy. The thickness of it swallows me. I tilt my weighted head back, yearning to take what seldom breath this confinement allows. For this air holds the icy secrets of this decaying joint. A grim crackle cuts in from behind me. My head lowers at the horrible sound, for it belongs to only a shell of a man. A shell he be, for he never truly lived. After all, only true existing is placed once the fluttered wings of an angel flit flitters over one's heart. Nah, Carmine's soul is slanted, as my sight be right now. His heart, is, his heart be as foul as the stench that beds around me. I aim for sight, only to lose against the woven cloth. It be from the sack, from the sack that closed my lids. This only sets a squall inside of me. My jaw bolts shut while my chest stiffens against the rope that binds me to this damn chair. You ought to be feeling right at home there, Burke. Carmen's vicious head snakes closer on my left. I become rigid when the touch of his greasy stub of a hand curls around my neck. My breath and sight surrender to this droning sack. I recoil, wanting nothing more than to lose the feel of his crummy clasp. Yet his nubs still grab a hold of my chin and yank. The pinch force splits my mouth open, unlatching my lips that were once shut. Bile hints on his breath as he begins to shout. His spit sprays right where my ear would would have shown, that is, if it were not hidden underneath this cloth. Right into the potato sack where you belong, you worthless patty. Visions of work from the true hands of Lucifer himself dance inside my wicked mind, of slicing a worn blade through Carmine's pipe. How joyous of a thought that is. Sadly, though, Soon as it leaps within my head, it swiftly seizes when Carmine's fist slams down onto my skull. You're a damn snake, O'Brien, Car Carmine hisses in my ear. He be the one who is a frickin' snake. Every last damn one of them, except her, Gabriella. Her heavenly name spills out from my lips. It triggers that fast freck with his fist again, smashing along the bone of my right cheek. The blow penetrates, causing a significant pierce inside my ear. Gabriella, you better shut the bone box of yours, O'Brien. You don't ever need to speak of her name again. She now belongs to Luca. Do you understand? The thought of another man, of another's hands preying upon her body as once were mine guts me. Carmine's next blow knocks all the vile thoughts further into my skull, drowning out what it, the existence is giving. I remain silent. It only serves its purpose. Hatred now claws its sharpened nails through my heart, not bearing to have my final thoughts be taunted by Luca, bearing Gabriella in want. If it were not for that fast, fat bastard Carmine, the thought of Luca would not have risen. Now, behind closed lids, I only see Luca with her. Horrid tales of what could be. They could be... Tell me something, Burke. Does that sicken ya? Carmine's voice drifts, however he be close. The dig of this barrel of his, eleven inch, be at the back of my head. He grunts such as the filthy swine he is. You see, Burke, if it weren't for... Alessa Drondo, Drondo, I would be bud deep in Gabriella's precious cunt. 
Ah, the sting of his words about to rip about her rips me apart. My head thrashes back as I try to lash out. That frickin' sly crackling of his echoes off the bleak, weak walls from my retort. He be damned aware that he gouges through me. Well, that is, you s well, that is, see, before your Irish cock tainted that precious punda. I snarl at his sickening words. Just a wee moment after, sparks that race the corner of my mouth, bearing the true grin at treasuring the memory of Gabriella. I, I was inside. True paradise. True paradise. Twas and what will forever be with me. Carmine lowers his shooter from the back of my head and slithers his way to face me once more. Upon his move, he sho shoves at my shoulders for his chair to rock. My heels slam into the pebbled floorboards to gain stillness. Sorry for your patty ass. Luca doesn't mind. Hell, I bet he's cashing in right now if you really think about it. He's planting a sun in her. The move to roll my neck is on instinct caused by the loathing I hold for Luca. Carmine steps up and plants the barrel of his gun right at my mouth. The rough barrier of the sack that be covering my face shoves along my lips when the 11 inch connects. The pressure from it tilts my head back. Pain rises in my throat as I choke out the words over the barrel that's shoved between them. Bite your frickin' words, ye fat freck. What was that? Can't hear you there. All you damn Irishmen are the same. All of you sound like you have a mouth full of shit. You know what, Beck? What are you going to do about it, huh? Carmine's tone, tone breaks from challenging to hollering. Not a goddamn thing, you piece of shit, Patty. Swiftly, he pulls the gun away, only to then lash the bunt of it straight center down on my face. Carmine's hit with such force this time, it pops my eyes open and blood spews from the bottom from my button soaking into the sack that drapes over my head. The hit throws me off balance, but Carmine reaches out and pulls at my collar to still me tipping me back in place for his better reach. That's it, see? You're the one tied, and I'm the one standing, Bert. What the hell can you do about it? You seen what happened to your pals. You know death ain't too far behind you now. A growl furiously spits through my knitted lips. My body trembles with a fury odom. My hands coil. The sting of the rope cuts into them, rubbing the flesh apart the more I have my wrists tear against the binding. I can feel the freck move behind me again. He hunches over, and I wait. Soon. Every breath of mine is now coned as my chest rises and falls with each beat of my heart. The damn thing cannot be stilled in my ribs. You're dead already, Burke. In due time, you'll be driving, taking a dive after uh, Alejandro's done with ya. All that rage had been locked within me, finally unchained. My jaw clenches as I brace myself. Then I whip my head back, connecting right square with Carmine's fat face. He wails. The sound of his stum stumbling steps lets me know I made out good. Ah, you best. Not wanting to throw away time, I take this moment to push forward buckling my back just as my feet find their footing. Hunched over I am when standing on wavering limbs. Be bowed with the chair strapped to my back, it's used to be to serve as a shield now. Carmine hollows, but only sounds of rubbish. He charges for the front of me. Swiftly, I turn on my heel. The legs of the chair clip him. The sound of the wood smashing over his reaching limbs brings triumph within. It bestrode and only for a moment, that be until I strike back, ramming what's left of the scraps, just be tied to my back straight into him, pinning Carmine against the wall, the sack that be shielding my sight slips free after the force. Get the splintering of his nose along with the chair, finally chair falling apart, blankets Car Carmine's call, cry. 
loose pieces of scrap dangle off the ropes that bind my hands together. With a roll of my shoulders, I give my arms a shake to rid me of what was left of the chair. Armani, Carmine sh strained croak wallops the wee room. Shite, time certainly will not be gracious with me now. In short order, I give my arms a savage stretch. The tie that once bound my wrist snaps. I wail as I rip apart my hands one last time. Savoring the burn of what be left from the worn bites of the, of the ties. Breathe. My heels lighter than shrubs' wings, my steps qu quicker than a hare. I swirl around with free fists and, plants a, and plant a stab, a stance. Staring down the foolish bimbo my mitts will soon meet. Dead, Carmine's word, fum word fumbles out of his blood-filled trap. I charge at him, locking my jaw right when my fist is about to greet him, only using the last second to shift so that it be my shoulder that rams Carmine back against the wall. He tenses when his back hits, blood spitting over my ear when he shouts, Fuck, Armani, now! With my fist raised, filled with fear, fury, I slam into his button where, from where the chair already broke it over and over until the sound of crunching turns to sobbing. Carmine's body heaps over. Using the side of my forearm, forearm, I shove at his stout chest so that he falls back. He sinks down against the cracked plaster. When his arse touches the floor, I take a hold of his vest, making bloody sure that the fat freck keeps still. Now Carmine will listen to every damn word, every threat, that be promised. I shall now bestow upon him. Ye are finished, Carmine. You'll soon be done with me, done with all of them, and soon will be done with your vile breasts that the pla that plague this earth. My mug twists in an agoni agonizing ear before I smash my forehead down over this battered one. Carmine tries to cry out, but I throw him to the ground. The air that escapes him masks his cry. The moment is dangerous, for I fail to remember who could be on the other side of this door. I am I am caught up, tangled in this vengefulness second. What was that, old timer, about Patty? I lean over him. In doing so, his blows from earlier spewed blood down my forehead that drips into my eye. Roughly swiping my left hand over my right eye, I split words. I spit words back into his bloody face. My hand cups the side of my ear as I truly trying to listen to the arse. All this damn bastard shows is nothing more than a defeated whimper. That'll soon change. Lining my withered boot against him, I connect my foot at straight into his ribs. Kick after kick, the crunching sound of his ribs separating breaks through his pleading cries, blood now churned with bile splits through his sorry trap. I drop my arm. My breath be heavier now as I circled around the sorry ass. He coughs up more blood, choking on it as he tries to stand, for only to crumble back down. I squat in front of the bastard, reaching out so I can grip his bulging chin in my grasp. Squeezing with all my force, I am able to lower Car Carmine's head flat against along the ground as I stare at him. I'm not beneath you, Black Hand, for I be soaring above. A chill ladens my voice as I have a go stroking through the scummy dark strands of hair on Carmine's head. For Gabriella is me wings. Giving his scalp a tug away from me, I stand swiftly to my feet. Carmine's, uh, Carmine's blurred eyes trail up my leg, his last sight being my boot greeting his pulpy mug. The sound of flesh and bone splintering hits my ears when the toe of my boot greets him, bringing a wee triumph within as the noise jumps off the walls. Carmine's pudgy face still as his body tilts, to the side before the weight of the bastard finally keels over. I rejoice in the sight of that fat freck drowning in his own blood. It's when I have a glance down that I catch pieces of his flesh smeared along my boot. I see his body jerk out of the corner of my eye with a sudden 
leap back, I bring another crackling kick to his side. Once more, the sound of bones break, breaking rings out around us. Blood mixed with upchecked sprays out of his mouth. Specks of it splattered onto my leg. I don't lose steam. I keep on giving as he himself bestowed upon me. Thank you for listening to this portion of this story.